हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग काजल यस वी कैन स्टार्ट थैंक यू सर गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ सेंट जॉन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मेसी एंड रिसर्च आई काजल सिंह अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ मास्टर्स इन फार्मेसी इन क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस extend a warm welcome to one of each one of you to our 24th session of sciencia before commencing this session let's have a small video of our college campus now i would like to commence with our today's first session which is entitled new trend in freeze drying of pharmaceutical product it's a pleasure for me to introduce our eminent speaker of today's session mr prashant sindhe sir mr prashant sindhe has been working as an assistant professor in the department of pharmaceutics at sgipr since 2019 He has completed his B Pharm and M Pharm from Savitri Savitri Bai Phule College, Pune University. He has three years of academic experience. His area of specialization is pharmaceutics. He is life member of professional organization, including the Maharashtra State Pharmacy Council. With this brief introduction, now I request Sir to take please to take over the session. good morning to all of you am i audible yes sir you are audible okay so good morning to all students now we will move to our next session of our science here that is recent advances in the lyophilization process in development of pharmaceutical dosage forms so in today's science session we are going to see the different different uh, points that is what is lyophilization or freeze drying what is the actual process of lyophilization what is the characteristics of a dried product that is free dried product whatever the product were collected from the lyophilization so that characteristics 
advantages and disadvantages of life realization what are the different different experience used in life realization and whatever the different different pharmaceutical and the biopharmaceutical products are in market which are prepared by using this life realization process <coughs> for the product we are going to see the proof overview of the product now first of all we are going to see the what is the life realization so basically you are already studied this life realization process in your pharmaceutical engineering that is your uh, freeze drying process so this life realization is basically known as a freeze drying process and it is used for the drying of the product now this in this life realization process whatever the water molecule or the solvent component which is present in your uh, we can say biological or the organic or the inorganic component so that will be get removed out through the process of sublimation so this sublimation is basically nothing but the main principle for the life realization if you consider the water as your example so water basic uh, we can say basic physical form of water it is in the liquid form so what happen in life realization process we convert this water into the freeze form that is in the ice form okay and when this water will be get converted into the ice form that is freeze form we are going to reduce the pressure we are going to reduce the pressure that means atmospheric pressure when you reduce the atmospheric pressure so at that time what happen whatever the water which is in the free which is in the freeze form or in the ice form so that will directly goes converted into the vapor form and it will be get collected by using the vacuum so this life realization process is basically based upon the sublimation as its main principle now if you consider the process of life realization so this life realization process is basically uh, carry out in uh, three steps or the three okay three phases so first one is nothing but your freezing stage second one is nothing but your primary drying stage and third one is your secondary drying stage so what is actually this freezing stage what is primary drying stage and secondary drying stage so basically in freezing stage whatever the whatever the biological biological component or the biological mixture we have or any organic or the inorganic mixture we have we are subjecting this material for the deep freezing for deep freezing we are going to maintain the temperature below the solidification this is also known as the temperature below compensation temperature now what is this temperature of solidification or the temperature of compensation so it is a specific temperature of that molecule or any other uh, chemicals which are present in your mixture up to that temperature the physical and the chemical properties of that material will always intact that means there is no change in the physical and the chemical properties of that material so this material is nothing but your so we are going to maintain the temperature that means solidification of the compensation temperature now when we maintain that temperature ultimately whatever the water molecule which is present in that sample so that will goes into the freeze form so this is nothing but your freezing stage now after freezing stage second one is your primary drying stage so basically in primary drying stage we are going to reduce the chamber inside this life realization instrument now what is the relationship between this uh, temperature and the pressure so you already studied about the uh, ideal gas equation that is your pv is equal to nrt pv is equal to nrt that means pressure is directly proportional to the temperature now pressure is directly proportional temperature that means when you uh, pressure is directly proportional temperature that means when you increase the pressure that means atmospheric pressure there will be the increase in the boiling point of your sample when you increase the temperature there will be the increase in the boiling point of sample and when you reduce the temperature ultimately there will be the decrease in the boiling point of the sample so this relation you are going to use in the life realization process and this relation or this uh, we can say principle also used in the autoclaving in autoclaving you are going to increase the pressure okay that means when you increase the pressure so ultimately whatever the boiling point of that water is there so that will also get increased normal boiling point water is 100 degrees celsius and when you apply the excess pressure so that will also goes increase up to the 120 degrees celsius and most of the microorganisms are get easily kill at the 120 degrees celsius so after freezing you are going to reduce the atmospheric pressure in that chamber so ultimately whatever the water molecule that is in the freeze form okay so that will be get easily uh, we can say evaporate at the lower temperature now this is about the primary drying stage after the primary drying stage we are move forward to the secondary drying stage now basically in secondary drying stage we are going to remove the water that did not freeze 
it is also known as the unbound water removal stage unbound water means now in freeze drying stage you are going to freeze out uh, freeze out the that means in freeze drying stage you are going to freeze the water molecule which is present in the sample but sometimes what happen the water molecule sometimes attached to the some of the functional group for example amide group is there or a water molecule which is present in that protein molecule so it's very difficult uh, so it's very difficult for that water molecule to get freezed out so in secondary drying space you are going to remove out the unbound water molecule which did not freeze in the freezing stage okay so in secondary drying space basically you are going to increase some amount of the temperature and you are going to decrease some amount of the pressure whatever the pressure is there so that again decrease so ultimately whatever the unbound water is there so that will also get removed from your sample so this is about the process of your lyophilization so first one is nothing but the freezing stage in which you are going to freeze out the water molecule in primary drying stage you are going to remove out the freeze water molecule that means you are going to convert this freeze ice in freeze ice or the freeze water into the vapor form by reducing the pressure and in secondary drying stage you are going to freeze out the you are going to remove out the unbound water by increasing small amount of the temperature and by decreasing small small, small, small amount of your pressure so this is about your uh, we can say uh, process of lyophilization now after lyophilization you are getting the product so this product having some of the characteristics are there so intact cake in a intact cake you are getting sufficient strength to the strength to prevent the cracking that means whatever the cake you are getting so that have somewhat uh, strength so ultimately intact cake can be get maintained uh, you will get the uniformity in the color as well as the consistency of the product sufficient dryness to that product sufficient porosity and the surface area will be get achieved freeze dry product again for whatever the product is there so that will also get free from the pyrogens as well as the particulates if the product will be chemically stable and last point is you are easily able to maintain the characteristics of the original doses form that means we are we already seen that we are going to maintain the temperature or the pressure uh temperature uh which is near to the compensation compensation temperature or the solidification temperature so that will maintain the proper characteristics that means physical and the chemical characteristics of that product so these are the characteristics of the free dry product now what are the basic advantages and the disadvantages of lyophilization so these are the advantages that is decomposition of the chemical is get minimized water removed without the excessive advantages basically you can spoil material specific temperature or at the more temperature there are the chances of the formation of the product so there are chances Next is increased stability of the product in the trash. It is due to the removal of the water molecule from the material. It will, it will also provide some fast dissolution of the reconstituent. Now, uh, basically, uh, the product you are getting. Yes, sir, continue. So, increase the the product, so, 
हेलो प्रशांत सर हेलो Is there more than one student? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, sorry, there is some other down network is there. Okay. So we will continue with the advantages and the disadvantages of live realization. Is sound is clear now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And all of you are able to see this PowerPoint. 
Yes, yes. Okay. So first advantage is the decomposition of the chemical is minimized. So basically, uh, second advantage is the water removed without the excessive heat. So we all know that the this in the freeze drying technique. So first step is your freezing stage. So ultimately, whatever the water uh, which is present in your sample, so that will be get freeze out and it will be get removed by the sublimation process. So very less amount of the temperature we are going to use to remove out the water. Next is increase stability of the product in a dry state. Uh, now increase stability of the product in dry state. That means it is related to the remove water. We all know that the when you are going to dry the product at high temperature. So at that time, there are the chances of the degradation of your biological material is there due to the fermentation. So ultimately, if the fermentation is there, so that will lead the biological degradation of the matter. So ultimately, stability will be get increased if you are dry this product at the low temperature. Next, it will increase the dissolution of the product. Now, it will increase the dissolution of product in the sense, basically, whatever the material you are getting from this lyophilization. So that material having somewhat, uh, we can say, uh, having some of the por porosity. When the proper porosity will be get maintained, so ultimately what particle size of that material will get decreased. And when particle size will be get decreased, so that will increase the surface area. And when surface area will be get increased, so that will increase in the, we can say solubility of that material. So when solubility will be get increased, so ultimately it will increase the dissolution as well as the bioavailability of that product. And last one is the heat sensitive material. Uh, water from uh, water which is present in your heat sensitive material so that will be get removed by avoiding the damage to that material so these are about the advantages of the lyophilization there are some of the disadvantages of lyophilization uh, handling and the processing time is somewhat increased basically lyophilization process is basically take for almost eight to ten hours next is volatile component compounds may be removed only by the vacuum Next one is reconstituents need to sterilize the diluent. That means whatever the material we are using for the lyophilization, they should be used sterilized. And next is cost and the complexity of equipment is somewhat high. So ultimately, it will increase the end price of the product. So these are the somewhat disadvantages of lyophilization. Now there are the different different excipients are also used in the lyophilization. So first is nothing but your lye protectant. So these life protectant are basically used to protect your physical and the chemical properties of your, uh, we can say, material which is goes under for the lyophilization. So glucose, sucrose, maltose are used as a life protectant. Second is cryoprotectant. So cryoprotectant are basically used to protect the biological tissues or the biological material. So ethylene glycol, uh, dimethyl sulfoxide, glycerol, so generally use as a excipient as a cryoprotector next one is your bulking agent so this bulking agent gives some of the adequate structure to the cake after the lyophilization process so mannitol and the lactose are used as a bulking agent buffering agent so they are basically used to control the ph so acetate buffers citrate buffers tartrate buffers and the phosphate buffers are used as a lyophilizing buffers preservative so antioxidant or the antimicrobials can be used as a preservative so ascorbic acid sulfurous acid salt that is bisulfate or even meta sulfides can be used as a preservative and there are some of the solubilizing agents are also used for example your twin 80 twin 20 LinkedIn or the cytotoxin so these are used as a solubilizing agent so that will increase the drug solubility so these are the different different excipients used in the lyophilization now next is the different different pharmaceutical products that can be prepared out by using this lyophilization process up so vaccines can also be prepared by using the lyophilization process antibiotics proteins and enzymes can also be prepared by using this lyophilization process this lyophilization can also be used to increase the solubility and the dissolution of your dosage form and it is also used in the regular formulation and development of your dosage form fill uh, formation that means in the formation of the film, they are also used for the lyophilization techniques, formulation and the development of the liposomes as well as the nano suspension. 
so this is about the use of lifelization technique in the bio, we can say pharmaceuticals and the biologicals so first one is nothing but the vaccines so we are not that the vaccine it is a biological preparation which will provide some of the active acquired immunity to the person to get fight against the infectious diseases now it is a biological preparation that means itself it consists of the biological material basically these vaccines consist of the attenuated viruses as your biological material now what are the attenuated vaccine so we all know that the viruses are susceptible to cause the any pathophysiological condition or the disease condition so if you want to kill out these viruses at that time you are going to use the vaccines as a treatment agent but which type of the viruses are you are going to use as a treatmenting agent so basically these attenuated viruses now what are these attenuated viruses so when you reduce out the virulence ability of any microorganism or the virus okay that type of the virus is known as your attenuated virus you are going to reduce the uh, we can say uh, virulence ability of that microorganism that means you are going to reduce the cause of the disease that means if the microorganism having the disease causing ability that ability you are going to remove out. it can be removed by using the genetic modification or the, any physical or the chemical modification so these are nothing but your attenuated viruses used as a biological material in the vaccine preparation so where we can use this freeze drying technique for the vac preparation of the vaccine so basically this uh, freeze drying technique or the lifelization can be used to increase the thermostability and the shelf life of the vaccines now these are the different different uh, marketed products of the vaccines which can be uh, which are prepared by using this lipolization process so for example pentacil it is one of the vaccine second one is even the rotarix it is also one of the vaccines prepared by using the lipolization process and say third one is your fx vax so this is also prepared by using the lipolization process and also in the current level so liposome based liquid vaccine as well as the mrna vaccines which are prepared by using this lipolization process they are also under, under trials next one is your antibiotics so we all know that the antibiotics are basically used to inhibit the growth as well as the to destroy the microorganism Basic, basically they are used to inhibit the growth that means they are going to decrease the reproduction ability of the microorganism and destroy the microorganism that means they are going to restrict the metabolic activity of microorganism so ultimately microorganism will be get killed so there are the different types of the semi-synthetic and the uh, we can say biotechnologically derived antibiotics are there that are prepared by using the uh, this lipolization process so these are the different different uh, we can say antibiotics which are prepared by using this lipolization process again this Lipolization process is also used to reduce the bio burden of these formulations. That means, uh, whenever we all know that the one of the important uh, we, uh, we can say disadvantages of these antibiotics is nothing but the antibiotic resistance. So, whatever the antibiotics which are prepared by using this lipolization process, they have some of the less bio burden. That means they are less susceptible for the microbial uh, we can say uh, antimicrobial resistance, or they are okay they are less susceptible for the antimicrobial resistance now this is about your antibiotics next is the proteins and the enzymes so this lipolization process is also used for the formulation of the proteins and the enzymes so we already know proteins are the large biomolecules that consist of the long chain of the amino acid residues and these amino acid residues are interlinked with each other by using the uh, this polypeptide chain and second one is your enzymes so these enzymes are itself nothing but your protein derivative that means and if you study the chemical structure of that enzyme so itself it is nothing but the protein structure so for the preparation of these proteins and the anti enzymes this lipolization process can also be used now where we, the, uh, we are going to use this lipolization process of the presidine process for the preparation of these proteins and enzyme so they can be used for the isolation and the solidification of the uh, we can say end product which is collected from the from the fermentation process and second it will also increase the thermostability and the shelf life of the protein and the enzymes which are collected from any other technique now these are the marketed formulations of proteins as well as the enzymes so this vanilla haldi or your soft copper powder so these are your protein supplements 
they are also prepared by using your lifelization technique. Now, next advantages of your lifelization technique is the solubility and the dissolution environment. So we all know that there are the disease classification. So in that disease classification, disease class two and the class four drugs shows the low solubility. If you want to increase the solubility of that product, so lifelization technique can also be used as a technique to increase the solubility. So basically, with that of the lifelization technique, you are going to use the solubilizing agent. So this solubilizing agent is also able to increase the solubility. And second, uh, we can say mechanism which takes place in the lifelization in which the solubility will be get increased is that nothing but the porosity of that sample. If you consider any, um, we can say crystalline powder or the crystalline material having some of the lower solubility. And when we subject this crystalline material to along with the solubilizing agent for the lifelization process, so that will convert this crystalline material into the amorphous material, which I would somewhat the higher solubility. So, for example, there are the different different drug molecules are there. Pyroxychem is there, nephetipine is there, or bicasin is there. So, solubility of that drug molecule is increased by using this lipolization technique. For example, if you see the example for this bicasin, so it is the original bicasin. This is a solid dispersion of the bicasin along with the solubilizing agent and this is your freeze drying product of the bicalcium so this freeze dry product having somewhat the amorphous nature than your original product so that means it will increase the solubility of the uh, drug molecule or your formulation again so by using this solubilization technique we can increase the solubility second method is nothing but the increase in the porosity so whatever the sample is there so it's pores that sample's porosity will be just increased by decreasing their particle size so ultimately if the particle size will be get decrease the solubility of that component will be get increased so these two types of the mechanisms of the techniques can be used to increase the solubility and the dissolution of your dosage form or your drug molecule next one is the thin film freezing now this thin film freezing is basically used uh, for the to study the morphological characteristics of the drug molecule that means to study the physical and the chemical characteristics of the drug molecule. Again, this thin film freezing technique is also used for the preparation of your aerosol powder enhancers or your nebulizers. That means they are the respiratory doses form. Okay. And they are also used for the preparation of your targeted doses form. Now, they are used for the preparation of the aerosol powder enhancers and the nebulizers in the sense of the increase in the solubility of your product okay or uh, we can say decrease in the particle size and in the preparation of this targeted doses form this freeze drying technique is basically used to increase the adhesiveness of your material for example if you consider uh, one of the drug molecules for example this tacrolimus okay so this tacrolimus drug is basically used uh, in the implant surgery and when the uh, and uh, what is the action of this tacrolimus drug so basically it will increase the acceptance ability of your normal tissues or the cell with that of your implant so that means this tacrolimus is basically used as a uh, it is used as a uh, that means we can say this tacrolimus can be used as a targeted dosage form okay so by using this thin film freezing the adhesiveness of this drug molecule can be increased by protecting this drug molecule with that of the adhesive excipients. We can increase the adhesiveness of any drug molecule by coating this active pharmaceutical ingredient with that of the adhesive excipients. So ultimately, when the adhesiveness of the drug molecule will be get increased, so ultimately, long lastingly, it will get stored in that region. So ultimately, it will increase its efficiency as well as the activity. So like this with thin film freezing, this is also one of the lipolization technique can be used for the preparation of the different different doses forms. Next one is the liposomes. So we all know that the liposomes are the small spherical shaped vesicles and they consist of the phospholipid bilayer. So these liposomes, that means freeze drying technique is also used for the preparation of the liposomes. So basically during the preparation of liposomes, whatever the your, uh, we can say liposome forming lipids are there, uh, next is water molecule is there, carrier molecule is there, drug molecule is there. So you have to prepare the mixture, that means homogeneous mixture of all of these components. And you have to place this homogeneous mixture for the lifelization. So ultimately that will lead to the form, formation of some of the fine liposomes. 
which have been the somewhat the higher strategy, which have been somewhat the uh, somewhat higher stability as well as the shelf life than of your normal diffusion components. So there are in market there are the lip, uh, lip life lies liposome formulations of these different different drug molecules are available in market that is your clarithromycin ciprofloxacin or your fluorescein or the cholestein and last one is your nano suspension so basically for the preparation of nano suspension so you will require the nanoparticles and for the preparation of that nanoparticles you will require to you need to decrease the particle size of the uh, we can say a drug molecule or the excipient. So for that purpose, you are going to use this lifelization technique. So these are the different different products and the drugs which are uh, whose nano suspension is basically prepared by using the lifelization technique. So this is about the different different uh, formulations which are prepared by using the lifelization technique. Now we will move to the next point that is conclusion and the future perspective. So we all already studied that this freeze drying technique is used in the different different uh, we can say aspect of the industries that means it is used in the biological industries food industries pharmaceutical industries nutraceuticals industries as well as the cosmetics industries basically in pharmacy or in the pharmaceutical field which is used for the preparation of your novel doses form that is your liposomes nanocrystals and the neosomes nanomycins okay so we need to identify whatever the problems we are getting during the use of these uh, lifelization techniques okay and while using this lifelization life techniques of the freeze drying techniques we have to also focus on the whatever the regulatory requirements are there or whatever the screen requirements are given by the different different authorities during the processing on this techniques and again while the formulation and the development of the different different doses form or the formulation and the development of the different different food product or the nutraceuticals we have to identify the critical areas critical areas that means uh, in which areas we are getting the difficulties while using the lifelization techniques and we have to find out the new solutions or the some other research solutions on that product so ultimately process will be more convenient so this is about the conclusion and the future perspective for our session these are the references which are used for the preparation of this today's session Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I, Kajal Singh, a student of M Farm in Quality Assurance, and it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks for today's session. I would like to thank our eminent speaker, Mr. Prashant Sinde, for enlightening us with his knowledge. Today's webinar gave a deep insight into the topic new trend in freeze drying of pharmaceutical product. Sir focused lyophilization, which is also called as freeze drying. He explained the process of lyophilization, characteristic of freeze dried product, advantage and disadvantage, excipient used in lyophilization, different product which can be produced by freeze drying which are vaccines, antibiotic, protein, and enzymes, and the uses of lyophilization. A sincere thank to Mr. Albert D'Souza, sir, for his encouragement and all the other dignitaries of the management. A special thanks to our principal, Dr. Savita Tauro, ma'am, for her support. I would like to thank the coordinators for their guidance and thank you for being there with us. Feedback link will be provided in your respective WhatsApp group kindly fill it that will help us to improve our program have a great day